Community Hockey United Methodist Church, Pastor Colin, grateful to be with you on this gorgeous Outer Banks Day. Hope you get a chance to get outside and, and social distance in some uh, fresh air at some point today. Just a couple of quick announcements before we continue in worship. Uh, first, I want to remind everybody that we are still hosting a room at the end. The changeover is happening uh, this morning. Uh, St. Andrews by the Sea is going to help host this upcoming week, and the All Saints folks who just left I just expressed how appreciative they were of our church uh, being able to host. They were just overwhelmed with gratitude that uh, we were able to, to keep um, our guests in the same spot for this week, going into the next week as well. So thank you to all that um, helped make that happen. I was also had the opportunity to hop in on some Google Hangouts and some Zoom small groups this past week. So thank you to all that are uh, helping lead that effort. Um, I know it was fun for me to see some familiar uh, faces so thank you for uh, participating in that and, and going to links to make our Zoom and Google Hangout and small groups uh, happen. But with that, I'm going to pass it to uh, Pastor Betsy for a little bit of a children's time and some prayer. Good morning, Kitty Hawk United Methodist Church. I'm so glad to see you in this venue. I miss you all so much, and I really have been missing children's time. So I just want to speak to the children for a very, very brief moment, but everybody else feel free to listen in. Kids, do you know how many bones you have in one hand? Now, Dr. Picorni's family cannot answer this. That would be cheating. He's a hand surgeon. But there are a lot of bones that you have in just one hand. And the reason I've been thinking about bones is that the scripture today talks about dry bones, just bones without any flesh or muscles or tendons, just bones laying out on a field. And Ezekiel was told to go to those bones and to tell the bones to wake up and get alive. And the way they were going to do that is to listen to the word of God. And I thought, that's so true. Every time we come to church, don't we get alive because we listen to the word of God. So the answer to the question, kids, how many bones do you have in one hand is 27. And I would like for you to take your 27 bones in your left hand and your 27 bones in your right hand and put them together and let's say a prayer. Please, everybody, pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that whenever we hear the word of God, we become alive. Father, we pray that you would help us to feel alive in this moment, that as Pastor Colin brings the message that you have prepared in him, we would be open to hear it and see it and bring it into our hearts. We thank you, Father, that we are able to be the church, even at a distance, we thank you for the call that you put upon us, and we ask you now to come and be with us by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit. And all together, all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Miss Natalie?
Our scripture for this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. I'm going to read verses 1 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very dry, many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered him, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So a couple of weeks ago, when all this started coming down, Meredith and I watched a movie called Jojo Rabbit. And at the very end of this movie, uh, they flashed a quote. And the quote came from a German poet, and the lines were this. It says, let everything happen to you. Beauty and terror, just keep going. No feeling is final. And even in the moment, it struck me struck me enough to, to take a picture of it with my cell phone as it flashed across the screen. This, this poet saying, let everything happen to you, beauty and terror, just keep going, for no feeling is final. And this morning, I'm more acutely aware that so many moments, so many seasons in life hold together both beauty and terror, both loss and joy, right? both grace and hardship. So many of the, the hardest moments of our life also are some of the moments that we're filled with the most grace and presence of God. And this morning, I want us to create some space for us to feel lament and loss, while at the same time experiencing God's joy and God's hope. Right? It's, it's emotionally healthy, it's spiritually healthy to lament. To acknowledge that there is loss. To acknowledge that things are not as they should be. Right? It's spiritual to look at the current situation in our world, in our community. Right? And say, you know, God, cry out to God. If you've got your Bibles and you're reading along Ezekiel, if you flip just a book back, there's an entire book called Lamentations. So it's downright biblical to allow ourselves space to grieve loss and to lament. But as Christians, we do so as a people with an unwavering hope that God is putting our world, the community, and even our lives back together. And that's what I see in this chapter of Ezekiel. Right? Ezekiel is holding both together lament and loss, while also speaking a word of hope from God. Now, why is Ezekiel given this vision of, of looking out at a valley of dry bones? Just a bit of context, but the prophet Ezekiel had been preaching 
judgment on the people of God. And the people of God experienced that judgment with the Babylonian exile. Now what happened was the Babylonian Empire came in, wiped out everything. I mean, Ezekiel himself was taken into exile in 597 BCE. And as part of uh, that, that siege, the Babylonians took over Jerusalem with siege warfare that lasted almost two years, where they experienced famine, disease, and despair. Right? They destroyed the city of Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple, the place where the people of God believed the Spirit of God resided. They killed many of its inhabitants and, and forced many to migrate to Babylon. So they were separated from one another, experiencing loss and grief, longing to be put back together. Anybody feel that this past couple of weeks? Just longing for God to bring us back together as we're scattered, to, to put us back together. And naturally, the people of Israel, they had questions of God. They said, God... Where are you? God, why are you letting this happen? God, are we even still your people? And it's a feeling that many of us know all too well, isn't it? In fact, some of you have even reached out to me this past week to ask those very same questions. Why is God allowing this to happen? Perhaps this morning you're even asking that question that God asked of Ezekiel. Can these dry bones live Again, Will these bones ever live again? And even in addition to the pandemic in our own congregation, we've had several diagnoses of cancer, harsh diagnoses of, of disease and sickness. We've had family members that have lost a child, loss of friends and loved ones. I, we're, as human beings, we're no stranger to asking that question. Can these bones live? live again. You know, when have you asked that question of God? When have you experienced a moment that, that felt hopeless? Sometimes we feel it when we lose a loved one. Imagine yourself in the graveyard asking God, God, why? God, when will I learn to live again? When will I learn to love again? I know that when I went down to Ocracoke after the hurricane, as I drove through that community, there was a piece of me that asked God, God, will this community ever thrive again? I almost imagine Ezekiel sitting amongst the devastation in the Bahamas, asking that same question, can these dry bones live again? I'm sure there are family members and doctors and nurses in Italy right now looking out at what must feel like a hopeless situation, a situation filled with dry bones, asking, when will these bones live again? And maybe to some degree, you're asking that question this morning. When will things ever get back to normal? When will my life return as I once knew it? And no, this isn't the same as the exile in Israel, but we are indeed cut off. We're separated. We're, we're scattered. We're cut off from one another. As I called uh, people this past week, people young and people old, both people just mourned. Folks on the phone mourned to me that I never believed in my lifetime that there would be a moment that I was cut off from gathering with my home church. And there's loss in that. And there's okay to, it's okay to grieve that loss, to, to lament that loss of being physically connected to one another. So I want you to allow yourself this morning to create some space to grieve or to lament whatever level of loss you might be experiencing. No matter how big, no matter how small, it's healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, to allow yourself to feel it, to acknowledge it, to not repress it and, and suppress it down. Maybe for you it's, it's the loss of a vacation or a trip that you've been planning for some time. As I look at Alice Spragans, who thought she was going to France next week. <laughs> I mean, maybe for you, it's, it's the loss of um, the rest of a school year with a beloved teacher, or the loss of a sports season that you've been training for, or the loss of prom. I mean, even myself, I, I lament the potential loss of a little four-year-old preschool graduation. 
When I looked at the loss of, of my mom being unable to visit my grandma who's living with uh, dementia, she has to look at her through a window. Right? There's loss in that. What loss are you lamenting this morning? I mean, there's losses of income, losses of job, losses of life. Right? And as Christians, in this moment, it's faithful to lament. To lament that things are not as they should be. But we do so at the same time as a people anchored in God's unwavering hope. I mean, Ezekiel, he's dropped in the middle of a most hopeless situation. Surrounded by skeletons in this vision that God gives him. And all of a sudden, God tells him, I need you to preach these words to some dry bones. Kind of feels like what I'm doing this morning to an empty sanctuary. But, sure enough, Ezekiel starts preaching what God tells him to preach, and all of a sudden he hears the clattering of, of bones coming together, flesh starting to appear on these dry bones, and God is starting to back together. God is starting to, to bring the people of Israel back together. That in a moment that felt... live. We say, you who have given up hope. You who have given up dreaming. You who think the best years are behind us. You who think God has forgotten about your little life. It is to you that we say this morning, God is not yet done. And every little act of hope matters. Every phone call, every text message, every email matters because it's a proclamation that God is not yet done. So your job in the midst of this pandemic is similar to the prophet Ezekiel. For you are called to both hold together lament and loss and joy and hope. Right? To make space for whatever it is you've lost. To make space to, to lament that the world is not as it should be. But to do so as a people anchored in hope. I mean, where do you see hope? In the midst of this, what is God teaching you? How is God's Spirit sustaining you? Where do you see God's Spirit moving in our community, putting our community and life together? I mean, go ahead and name it in the comments. Like, where have you seen and experienced the very real hope of God? I mean, globally, I've experienced hope as, as I feel more connected to human beings across the world than ever before. I've experienced hope where divisive issues feel less divisive in this moment. I've experienced hope as I've been reminded that I'm a human being and not a human doing. I've experienced hope as I've seen just the outpouring of love for our teachers the outpouring of love for, for doctors and healthcare workers in big cities like New York and Atlanta, whenever there's a shift change, the high rises that surround the hospitals break out in applause and cheers for minutes at a time as they thank and cheer on our nurses and our doctors. Right? I see hope in our community as businesses and community members sacrifice to remind us that we belong to one another. Even in what might feel like a valley, there is so much hope. And folks, hope is our message. Hope is what God gave Ezekiel as he was sitting in that valley of dry bones. He was given a hope that although the people of Israel felt lost, that God would indeed one day restore them. We're given hope that the last word of the gospel is not crucifixion, but resurrection. That God was not done on Friday. For the resurrection tells us that God is in the business of bringing life out of death. So this morning, how can you leave space for lament, for loss, to acknowledge it, 
Shoot, if you need a good cry, have yourself a good cry. Weep over it. Again, not only is it healthy, it's downright biblical to lament. Yet at the same time, how might we grieve as a people who have not lost hope? Grieve as a people who, like Ezekiel, know that God is in the business of putting communities and lives back together. How is God calling you to speak a word of hope in your family, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, on social media? How might we as the church dare to believe that God is not yet done, that dry bones will rise again? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this moment to be together virtually. God, we give you thanks for the community in which you've given us. And God, we acknowledge some of the losses. Loss is big, loss is small. God, we acknowledge them and lament that all is not as it should be. And we acknowledge them, confident that you are a God of resurrection. Confident that you are a God who puts communities back together. Confident that you are a God who puts life back together. And God, we claim that promise this morning. For you are the resurrection and you are the life. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. This usually is the time in our worship service when I say to everyone, now let us continue worshiping God with the giving of his tithes and our offering. And the reason we say it that way is because giving truly is an act of worship. And we just want to take a moment this morning to thank all of you who have been faithful with your giving. Thanks to Mom and Pop Snyder. Keep those checks coming. That's Colin's parents. But we really do appreciate the fact that you continue to support God's ministries here at Kitty Hawk United Methodist Church. If you're trying to figure out how to continue to do that, we're going to post a link afterward so that you can do online giving. And also, you're always welcome to drop a check by the church office. So thank you for that. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we can only give because you first gave to us. We know that every good gift around us comes from heaven above. So we thank you that we have anything to give. And we thank you for everything that you gave. And in this season, Father, we just pray as one that you would come onto our earth and that you would eradicate this virus in the name of Jesus. We pray for all of our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our EMTs, all of those people who are rushing toward this crisis and putting themselves in harm's way. All first responders, every essential personnel, the grocery store workers, the pharmacists, we thank you for every one of them, for their courage and their bravery and their obedience, and we pray that you would keep them safe and build a hedge of protection around our community. But Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus, this virus would be eradicated from this earth. We understand the science. We are being compliant. We are staying at home. We're washing our hands like never before. But we know, Father, that you are our hope. We know, Father, that you are our salvation. And so when the time is ready, we pray for that moment where we can come back together and worship. We pray for that moment where we can hug one another. We pray for that moment where we can gather in our fellowship hall and eat casseroles because we're Methodist and that's what we do. And we pray with hope because, Father, we know that there will be an end to this. And we thank you that this day, we are one day closer to the very end. So thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And all together, all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Natalie?
may you go forth in peace, and may the strength of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.